Welcome back to story time. I have lots of good stories to tell today. Okay, we have, I, actually you count them and you tell me how many stories. Maybe we won't even get to all of them. All right, ready to count? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No way, I'm not going to tell seven stories. I don't think so. I did pick them. Okay, are you guys ready for story number one? This is a brand new story. I've never told it in the library before. Yes, I have heard And I wonder if you could guess what the name of it is. It's, it's, the name of this book is a shape. Circle. The name of this book is Circle. Okay? I said Circle. Yep. All right. Who's ready to hear Circle? Remember. Listening ears? I'll listen. Everybody's listening ears on? Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? <coughs> okay. This is who? Circle. circle. That's circle. This is Circle's waterfall. Do you like that waterfall? Yeah. Okay. One day, circle and square and triangle played a game near her waterfall. Here are the rules, circle said. I will close my eyes and count to ten. Can you do that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You must hide somewhere. When I open my eyes, I will try to find you. Right. Square said, okay. Triangle said, neat. There is one more rule, said Circle. No hiding behind the waterfall. Square said, okay. Why not, though, Triangle said, because Circle it's very, very dark in there. And Square said, okay. Triangle said, I'm not afraid of the dark. Circle closed her eyes and she counted to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ready or not, here I come, said Circle. When she opened her eyes, Square was just standing there. He pointed and said, Triangle went behind the waterfall. Circle sighed. I will go find him. Circle said, Square, you are very, very brave. I know, Circle said. And Circle slipped behind the waterfall. It was quiet on the other side of the waterfall, and Circle called out, Triangle, Triangle, where are you? Where are you? There was no answer. Farther inside, there was not much light. Triangle, Triangle, where are you? There was no answer. She even went farther until it was all dark. Look at that. Triangle, said Circle. There you are. Why do you always break all the rules? There was no answer. Why do you always spoil our fun? There was no answer. Why are you such a bad friend? There was no answer. I'm sorry, said Circle. I should not have said that. You are a good friend. You just made us worried. We love you, Triangle. 
thanks, Trial said, Triangle said from behind her. Circle turned around and said, Triangle? Yes, said Triangle. I'm sure glad to see you and Square. Circle said Square. Square is outside. This is not Square. I thought it was you. No, said Triangle. That's not me. No, said Circle. Oh, said Triangle. Circle turned back and faced the shape in the dark. Who are you? Who are you? There was no answer. Ah, said Triangle. Triangle and Circle ran very fast back through the dark. Back through where there was not much light. You see them coming? They're running out. Back through the waterfall, back to the outside. Square was waiting for them. They told him what had happened. Well, Square said, I'm sure glad I stayed here. Triangle said, now I'm afraid of the dark. Circle looked back at the waterfall falling. You know, she said, that shape in the dark might not have been bad. It might have been a good shape. We just could not see it. Circle closed her eyes. I wonder, Circle said, what kind of shape was it? Then they all closed their eyes and they each pictured a shape. If you close your eyes, what shape do you think it was? Let's close our eyes. I don't know. I know what it was. I think it was a triangle. Guess what I think it was? A heart. You think it was a diamond? A star. A, a star, a diamond. Those are all good shapes. An oval? Could be. All right. What do we give that story? Do we give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down? I think thumbs up. All right, that's story number five. I'm almost finished. No. Okay, here's story number two called The Grumpy Monkey. What's grumpy? Can I see grumpy faces? Now, can I see happy faces? Oh, I love those. Okay, those are my favorite faces, the happy ones. All right, you ready for Grumpy Monkey? Okay. Here we go. Grumpy Monkey. This is another brand new story. I saved it just for you. One wonderful day, Jim Pansy woke to discover that nothing was right. The sun was too bright, the sky was too blue, and the bananas were too sweet. Jim was confused. What's going on? Maybe a grumpy, suggested Norman from next door. I'm not grumpy, insisted Jim. So that's his dad. Does he look a little grumpy to you? Yeah. A little bit to me, too. On his walk, he met Marabou. Jim's grumpy, Norman told Marabou. Why are you grumpy, Jim? asked Marabou. It's such a wonderful day. Grumpy? Me? I'm not grumpy, said Jim. But look at how you're standing, Marabou said. It's true, said Norman. You're all hunched. So Jim loosened up. Then he ran into Lemur. Jim's grumpy, Norman told Lemur. Why are you grumpy, Jim, asked Lemur. It's such a wonderful, wonderful day. Grumpy? Me? I'm not 
Grumpy, said Jim. Your eyebrows look grumpy, said Lemur. It's true, said Norman. Your eyebrows are all bunched up. So Jim raised his brow. Then he tripped over Snake. Oh no, said Norman. That's the last thing you need when you're feeling so grumpy. Grumpy? Me? I'm not grumpy. Then why that frown, said Snake. I think it's because you tripped over, I tripped over you, Norman whispered to Snake. So Jim put on a smile. Finally, Jim looked happy. Does he look happy to you? Yeah. He does? Do I look happy? Yeah. But he didn't feel happy inside. Everyone wanted Jim to enjoy this wonderful day. You should sing along with us, said the birds. Jim didn't feel like singing. You should swing with us, said the monkeys. Well, Jim didn't feel like swinging either. I can't see the picture. You should roll with us, said the zebras. Jim didn't feel like rolling. You should stroll with us, said the peacocks. But Jim didn't feel like strolling. You should lie in the grass. You should stomp your feet. You should take a bath and make a splash. You should hug someone. You should laugh. You should take a nap. You should eat old meat or some honey. You should jump up and down. You should sit in the sun and you should dance. Why are you so grumpy, Jim? Asked the others. It's such a wonderful day. I'm not grumpy! shouted Jim as he beat his chest. And he stomped off. Jim felt sorry. A little sorry for shouting at everyone, but mostly he felt sorry for himself. I guess I am grumpy, Jim sighed. And just as he was starting to feel really, really sad, he came upon Norman, and Norman was slumped. His eyebrows were bunched up, and he was frowning. What's the matter? Are you grumpy, asked Jim? No, I danced with porcupine, said Norman. Are you OK, asked Jim? It hurts, but I'll probably feel better soon enough, said Norman. Are you still grumpy? Yes, said Jim. But I'll probably feel better soon enough, too. For now, I just need to be grumpy. It's a wonderful day to be grumpy, said Norman. And Jim agreed. So, and he already felt a little bit better. And that's the end. So what, is it okay to be grumpy? Yeah. All right, let's see those grumpy faces again. And now let's see some happy faces. I love those faces. Okay. That's story number 10. And I'm finished. No. Thumbs up, thumbs down. I knew it. I could tell. No, I could, you, you did a thumbs up. I could tell you liked it. You were smiling through the whole story. Okay. Now. I know you know this story called Pete the Kitty and the Groovy Playdate. Now we have read it. Yep. But I like this story so much I decided I'm reading it again because it's new. Yeah, I love it. You love it too? I do too. All right, so Pete the Cat and the Groovy Playdate. Pete the Cat? Yep, Pete the Cat. Here we go. Pete the Kitty jumps out, jumps out of bed. I cannot wait, Grumpy Toad, and I have a groovy, groovy play date. Yep. Hey, Grumpy Toad, I'm ready to play. It's going to be an awesome day. Pete wants to play with Grumpy Toad's cool blue truck. You think it's cool? 
zoom, zoom, zoom all around the room. But Grumpy Toad starts to whine. That truck is mine, mine, mine. Pete the kitty says, no worries, that's okay. I'll find something else to play. Pete finds some blocks. Let's build a city, says Pete the kitty. But Grumpy Toad starts to whine. These blocks are mine, mine, mine. Pete the kitty says, no worries, that's okay. I'll find something else to play. Pete sees a superhero cape. Far out, he says. Have no fear, Super Kitty is here. But Grumpy Toad starts to whine. That cape is mine, mine, mine. He's not very nice. Grumpy Toad has all the toys and Pete has none. This play date is just not fun. Pete is sad. Pete is blue. He thinks about what to do. Grumpy Toad, wouldn't it be better if we were playing together? Grumpy Toad says, my pile of toys has grown. But it's no fun playing all alone, is it? Do you have fun playing when you're all alone? No. Grumpy Toad thinks of all the fun he and Pete have together. Yes, sharing would make this play date so much better. Grumpy Toad shares his truck with Pete. You push me and I'll push you. Zoom, zoom, zoom all around the room. Grumpy Toad shares his blocks. Here are the blocks. Pete the Kitty for you and me to build a city. These pages get stuck. Grumpy Toad shares his cape. Okay, time for superheroes to save the day. Have no fear, Wonder Toad and Super Kitty are here. Yeah. Wonder Toad. Grumpy Toad shares all his toys with Pete. They play and play and play. What a groovy, awesome day. Thank you, Grumpy Toad, for sharing your cape, your truck, and your blocks. Wow, sharing rocks? And that's the end. Was it a good? They're sleeping. He's sleeping with the truck, Grumpy Toad. And what's um, Pete the Cat sleeping with? That cave. That cave. And the costume. Yep. Okay, thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs down. I love Pete the Cat and Pete the Kitty. Okay, how many stories is that? I can't remember. Three. Three. Okay. Here is Boo Hoo Bird. Yeah, this one's old. This is an old story. Yeah, long time ago we read this one. But sometimes they're my favorites and I like to read them many times. Is that okay? Yep, look. Look what someone did to my book. Okay, ready for Boohoo? Bird and Raccoon were enjoying a game of catch when Bird got bonked on the head. Ouch, moaned Bird. That hurt a lot. And he started to cry. <laughs> oh, no, said Raccoon. I've wounded Bird. I'll kiss it better. Well, Raccoon kissed Bird's bonk. Bird kept crying. It still hurts. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, said Raccoon. Let's see if Rabbit can help. Raccoon told Rabbit what happened. Poor bird, said Rabbit. Would a big hug help? What do you think? Would a hug help? Would he feel better? Rabbit gave Bird a hug. Bird cried some more. It's not helping. Let's go find Beaver, said Rabbit. He'll know what to do. 
What you need is a cookie. What do you think? That will help? You can fix any problem with a cookie. Bert Beaver gave Bird a cookie. Bird cried loud, I think I'm getting dizzy. Let's ask Sheep what to do, said Beaver. She's full of ideas. Beaver showed Bird's boo-boo to Sheep. How about a game of hide and seek? The animals ran and hid. You want me to hide, said Bird. I can hardly walk. Surely Fox can make you feel better, said Sheep. He's clever. Bird got bonked on the head, Sheep told Fox. He's quite upset. What you need is a Band-Aid, said Fox. He disappeared into his den and he came back. Band-Aids always make my boo-boos feel better. Fox put the Band-Aid on Bird's head. The Band-Aid isn't working! Boo-hoo-hoo, cried Bird. It's not working. Boo-hoo-hoo, -hoo, cried Bird's friends together. Nothing is making Bird feel better. Nothing. Bird looked at his friends and he felt his bonk. It didn't really hurt anymore. I think I'm okay now, he said. But his friends couldn't hear him. I said, I'm all better now, shouted Bird. I'm all better. See? Bird stood on his head. Silly Bird. You're so silly, Bird, said the animals. They laughed and they stood on their heads too. Come on, said Bird. Let's play catch. Yeah. And that's the end. Uh-oh, guess what's happening? Someone's getting a bonk again. Another bonk. What do you think he's going to say when he gets bonked this time? Wah, boo hoo hoo hoo, he's going to say. I think. Okay. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Up. Always, always up. They're fun stories. Okay. This one is kind of silly, too. After this one, I think we'll do the Limberjack. This is called Gorilla, Gorilla. Anybody here like gorillas? Are you afraid of gorillas? No. I do, too. All right, let's see what happens with Gorilla, Gorilla. Ready? I love this story. A mother mouse's baby has gone missing gone. She went up the mountain. She went down the mountain. Round and round and round the rainforest, but she still couldn't find him. The rainforest was very, very big, and the baby was very, very small. The mouse thought she had lost her baby forever. Just when things couldn't get any worse, out jumped a big hairy, scary ape. Gorilla! Gorilla! She screamed. Help! Help! He'll catch me. He'll squash me and scratch me. He'll mince me and mash me and crunch me up for lunch. Stop! bellowed the gorilla. Stop! But the mouse ran and ran and ran over the bridge, over the sea, all the way to China. But the gorilla was never far behind. Who are you running from, Mouse? asked Panda. A killer gorilla, she squeaked. Help, help, he'll catch me, he'll squash me and scratch me, he'll mish, mince me and mash me and crunch me up for lunch. <coughs> Stop, bellowed the gorilla. But the mouse ran and ran all the way to America. But the gorilla was catching up. Who are you running from, Mouse? asked Chipmunk. A killer gorilla, she squeaked. Help, help, he'll catch me. He'll squatch me and scratch me. He'll mint me and mash me. He'll crunch me up for lunch. Stop, yelled the gorilla. But the mouse ran and ran. 
into the submarine, under the sea, all the way to Australia. The gorilla had almost caught up. Who are you running from, mouse? asked Koala. A killer gorilla, she squeaked. Help, help, he'll catch me, he'll squash me and scratch me, he'll mince me and mash me and crush me, uh, crunch me up for lunch. Stop, bellowed the gorilla. But the mouse ran and ran and ran across the desert, into the submarine, under the sea, across the ice, all the way to the Arctic. She looked around. She was all alone, except for the gorilla. Stop, bellowed the gorilla, stop. The mouse tried to run, but she was too tired. The snow was so thick, and she'd run such a long, long way. The gorilla came closer and closer and closer and closer. The mouse stood still. She shivered, and she shut her eyes. She wished she could see her baby just one more time before she was eaten by the gorilla. Here he is, said the gorilla. Cradled in his huge hands was a tiny baby mouse. I found him in the forest, said the gorilla. I was trying to give him back, but you wouldn't stop. Who are you running from, mouse? Who was he running from? The mouse looked into the gorilla's kind eyes and blushed. Oh, nobody you know, she squeaked. I'm not frightened anymore. Even so, it's a big scary world out there, said the gorilla. Let me carry you all the way home. You'll feel much safer. And the mouse did. See them right there? He carried them all the way home. And that gorilla wasn't even scary, was he? He was being nice. He found that little baby mouse, and he tried to give it back to the mama, but mouse was afraid. And that's the end of Gorilla Gorilla. I know you never heard that one before. Thumbs up, thumbs down. You know what? When you're that quiet, I know it's thumbs up. Okay, we're going to do the Limberjack. Just... I know there are more books, but we don't have a lot of time, and I know you want to see her dance, right? Yeah, okay. But I also want to do the other book. I will save those. Okay. What are we singing? She'll be what? Eating a gorilla when she comes. No. Okay, are you ready? She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Woo woo! She'll be riding six white horses when she comes. She'll be riding six white horses when she comes. She'll be riding six white horses. She'll be riding six white horses. She'll be riding. Six white horses when she comes. Woo, woo! Oh, well, I'll go out to meet her when she comes. Oh, well, I'll go out to meet her when she comes. Oh, well, I'll go out to meet her. Yes, we'll all go out to meet her. Yes, we'll all go out to meet her when she comes. Woo, woo! Oh, she'll have to sleep with Grandma when she comes. Oh, she'll have to sleep with Grandma when she comes. Oh, she'll have to sleep with Grandma. Yes, she'll have to sleep with Grandma. Yes, she'll have to sleep with Grandma when she comes. Woo, woo. She'll be wearing red pajamas when she comes. She'll be wearing red pajamas when she comes. She'll be wearing red pajamas. She'll be wearing red pajamas. She'll be wearing red pajamas when she comes. Woo, woo. Woo. How'd you like that dance? You like her? She's a nice dancer, huh? Now they're singing. Now they're singing. She'll be. You have to sing it with me. She'll be. Hello, when she comes. 
She'll be coming around the gorilla when she comes. She'll be coming round the gorilla. She'll be coming round the gorilla. She'll be coming round the gorilla when she comes. Woo! Woo! I think she's exhausted. I have one. She did a lot of dancing. I have that. You have a limp. This is called a limber jack. A limber jack? Yes, she's very limber. See, her legs can move and her arms can move. Okay. No, her head doesn't move. She's wooden. Okay. She's going away. And I want to thank you guys for coming to story time again. Um, want to say goodbye to everybody in the audience? Evelyn, can you count everybody? Oh, good. Yes. Bye, Erica. You guys were great today.